All right. At this time, let's begin today's webinar, Build Great Data Products Using Data Observability. It is my pleasure to introduce your moderator, Girish Bhatt, Senior Vice President of Marketing at Axel Data. Girish, you have the floor. Uh, thank you very much, Colleen. Uh, folks, welcome to today's event on Build Great Data Products Using Data Observability. I'm Girish. I'll be the host of today's session, as Colleen mentioned. I'm delighted to have two data le uh, leaders representing healthcare join me for this thought leadership session. Welcome, Nancy and Krishna, to today's session. Thanks, Girish. Yep, great to be here. Glad to have you. So people often think about what is a data product? So what I've and I've seen is that many successful organizations have embraced the concept of a data product, which is more of a holistic way of looking at how do data, how does data provide the right outcome to the business stakeholders as well as their cross-functional stakeholders. We'll talk about that a little bit more. When it comes to data observability, in case you have not heard about it, it's emerged as one of the so-called hottest categories in the industry today. And it's, uh, um, 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 uh, it's, it's emerged as a new way in which it's disrupting uh, current, and, uh, um, uh, uh, current data management uh, uh, tools and technologies, as well as the new ways of doing it. So why don't we get started? So this is a quick uh, snapshot of today's agenda. We'll, we'll start with a bit more of the detailed speaker introductions, and then we'll discuss a little bit in detail, what is a data product? What are representative data products in healthcare? And we'll review what are the challenges posed by data management? And how does data observability help? So why don't we get started? Uh, first of all, as I mentioned, we'll start with a bit more of the detailed introductions. I want to welcome Nancy to uh, introduce yourself and as well as your organization. Yeah, sure. This is Nancy Colton, and I am with Carillon, which many of you may not have heard of, but um, it, it's part of the broader Elevant Health organization, which, it, which actually was formerly known as Anthem. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of name changes recently, but um, you know we are one of the the largest health insurers with over 44 million members, and we continue to uh, build out our enterprise data and analytics uh, platforms uh, uh, and capabilities uh, uh, across our our company. And so hopefully we'll be able to touch on some of those those key points today. Glad to have you, Nancy. Krishna? Hey, great to hear that, Nancy. Yeah, Krishna Tamalapalli, uh, being part of uh, Ohio Health. Uh, so those of you from healthcare, you know, we call it as the provider space. Uh, and as you say, Nancy is more from the payer space, right? That, that's how we, the terminology in the healthcare. Uh, so we have uh, we have 13 hospitals as we speak and about 200 clinics uh, in, our, in Ohio, around Columbus and uh, yeah, the nearby cities. Uh, yeah, uh, primarily, we all, I mean, have been in data for a very long time. Uh, currently, I, I, I head their data engineering and BI at Ohio Health. Perfect. As you see, uh, it's a great balance, and we're already uh, getting started with the panel. That's awesome. So, so one thing which I always like to have my uh, um, uh, my, my uh, experts share about themselves is I, I want to know what a fun fact. Perhaps if. Krishna, you first can share a fun fact about yourself and then Nancy, uh, something about yourself that the, uh, that others may not necessarily know about. Sure, yeah. I mean, I don't know, it's, it's fun, but like, yeah, I used to be a very avid badminton player. I used to be competing in a bunch of Midwest tournaments and uh, uh, one few of them. So, uh, but I think after my three kids, I uh, stopped playing them. So now I think someone has to teach me how to hold a racket. <laughs> <laughs> Once an athlete, always an athlete. <laughs> That's good to know. Nancy? Yeah, so one of the things that I do in my uh, spare time is I run a Greyhound adoption group. So we 
um, you know, go to the the Greyhound race tracks and those at those athletic dogs that are ready to retire we help uh, find them forever forever homes so i've been engaged in that for about seven years and uh really love the breed oh fantastic nancy and and again i'm, I'm perfectly fine you sharing information about the organization and so that if you want folks from your area to help you and or participate in your uh ch charity endeavors here appreciate that very good all right, folks, so why don't we get started uh, with today's session? So uh, healthcare, I think, is arguably the most discussed, but uh, but uh, probably the most under uh, least understood area when it comes to data and analytics uh, um, uh, uh, from a, both from a provider care and from the solution provider perspective. So when I started uh, looking uh, uh, looking at data, I, I, the st statistics are frankly mind boggling. It's 30% of the world's data is generated by healthcare. Often people take a very narrow lens when it comes to uh, healthcare and say, oh yeah, it's a provider, it's the tools. But I think the, the reality is a lot more uh, uh, when it comes to that. So, so I'm, I'm, we'll, we'll get our panelists to chime in and share their viewpoints. And I think each of them are experts in their own field, one from a provider, one from a care perspective. Uh, we'll, we'll get into some of these things. This is from the sheer data perspective. And then when, if you look at what's the healthcare spend, and this is just in US alone, it's actually four, the last time it was reported was in late 2020. It was $4.1 trillion was spent in US for healthcare. And it turns out it's roughly about 20% of US's GDP. That's fascinating, right? 20% is spent there. And, and I know folks from healthcare will, I, I, I hope Nancy and Krishna will say, it's, it's no big deal, we have always known this, but for folks who are outside don't necessarily understand the complexity uh, and how, how involved and how many touch points exist within a healthcare, uh, when I use healthcare broadly here. And then the last statistics I wanted, or a statistic I wanted to share here was the growth in healthcare data. It's projected to be, Roughly about 36% CAGR, that's cumulative annual growth, growth rate. So this is again, fascinating, right? So it's not only the largest uh, um, uh, source for the world's data, that's 30%, but it's also growing quite significantly more than most of the other industries. There may always be niche industries here, and these are some of the sources, folks. I, I don't know about you, Nancy and Krishna, I find this fascinating. Uh, why don't we get your thoughts into how this has evolved and uh, and where it's evolving? Yeah, and maybe I can can start. And you know, this is something that we see we we've seen you know happen exponentially o over time. And at least from within our company, kind of as a traditionally as a as a payer. Um, you know, data was fairly standard for, for many years. I've been in this industry for over 30 years and, uh, you, you know, it used to be your basic claims, revenue, you know, the things that, that provide, that um, payers touch. So who are our providers that we contract with? What claims do we pay? What um, revenue do we, do we collect and et cetera? But, you know, in the, in the past 10 years, we've really, exploded our, our, our data by getting into all of the, the kind of clinical data space. When you start looking at all the, the medical records, when you start looking at how people interact with us, whether it be through, you know, capturing chat information, being able to link a consumer's experience from how they, how they contact us, whether they call or, or, or chat, being able to bring in additional uh, data sources as those emerge and, and, and even getting into, you know, more biometric type data, wearables, everything that we can, we can, you know, think about in terms of how do we, you know, get to our mission of improving the health of, of our, of our members. So we have seen a, a tremendous explosion in, in data. Um, just as the as the industry continues to grow, and we can continue to really leverage data in a lot of our products, and be much more of an insights driven based on data organization. 
Yeah, yeah. Just to piggyback on that, right? As exactly as Nancy said, right? Today, there's a lot of. Uh, I mean, I would have been surprised with these numbers if if I wasn't in the healthcare space. But now, just being in that, if you look at that, last time we cataloged, I've noticed that we have about 1,900 plus cataloged clinical applications that we use. Just think about that, right? And the amount of data that they generate. Obviously, uh, we always think about the electronic medical records platform as the big uh, uh, the source of information. Absolutely, it is. Uh, but there are a lot of other applications that that also contribute towards the taking care of a patient, right? And many of this is continuous data. Just just in the heart and vascular space, if you look at the implants that take and the amount of data they generate every second, uh, it's it's actually a challenge for us to even you know if if they cross n number of hours, it is a it is a challenge for us to even process and pull this data in. So you have to be pulling it at regular intervals so it doesn't become large enough for you to even process that. So totally can see why why these numbers are. Uh, but but actually, I also want to say that like the middle start, right? The healthcare cost. I think that's a big challenge like we all are facing in the healthcare industry today, right? Costs are growing. We want to keep the quality the of uh, the way the service the quality of the service we give to the patient. But at the same time, we don't want to, the patient to be paying a lot for it, or even even the cost should be optimized, right? And that is where a lot of uh, how can we optimize this? How, what technology can help? All this is becoming more, more and more relevant now. Girish, you might be muted if you're talking. But back to you. Yeah, sorry. Thank you. So, 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 so yeah, no, no, fascinating. 1900 clinical catalog apps. So, so from your perspective, Nancy, is there uh, some broad statistics that uh, that's public uh, that that's that could be of interest to today's audience? Um, not that's that's really public at, at, at this stage, but mm -hmm. we definitely have a, a, a very uh, large footprint in the number of uh, uh, products and or applications that, that we use within the company to manage everywhere from, you know, the, the, the care of our of our members to, you know, understanding some of our our core um, uh, needs that they have. Let me just say that. Yeah, and, and and the number, and I think at the start you mentioned uh, the number of subscribers or uh, consumers mm -hmm. that you have, right? That, that in right. itself uh, probably generates significant amount of data in addition to the analytics right. and in your role as data engineering lead as well. Right. And, you know, we do, we are, you know, cover both uh, members in a, you know, commercial type of employer group individuals, as well as Medicaid, Medicare, and, and FEP. So we've got a, a diverse set of, of customers and with certainly some unique needs as we interact with uh, all of the various uh, lines of business that we support. Cool, cool. Awesome. So, so uh, what, what we'll do is we'll kind of continue on. So uh, with the the co the concept of a data product. So uh, I I think at the outside I said um, um, uh, what what we are realizing is more and more. I, and I know you guys can tell me and uh, share with their audience saying of course it's always been like this in healthcare. Uh, broadly, there's many successful companies have embraced this concept of data product. And, and by that, what I mean is it's not a tool or a technology, it may use multiple tools or technologies, but it's more of a holistic way in which you're delivering value to your stakeholders or the business. So at, at the, as an outsider, I'm, I'm not in healthcare for say. So, so when I look at the broad categories of data products, uh, you know, there's the diagnostic ones, there's uh, what uh, e-health, uh, 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 there's analytics, there is research going on and data is integral like you both of you highlighted. What I would like to get your thoughts on is uh, how are, your you and uh, your organizations looking at the concept of data products and perhaps even share some examples with uh, today's audience. Yeah. Well, I am happy to, to, to start there. Um, you know, we really have a, a variety of, of, of different different data products that that have come up and, and, and I'll say more traditionally kind of in the the health payer space just to to kind of do those you know broad functions of of monitoring 
how we get people into care management programs, who needs to, you know, maybe maybe be enrolled in a chronic care condition program, understanding what our, our data and, and cost trends look like, how we can better, you know, manage some of those things and, and uh, really meet the, the, the quality as well. But, but as, as things have evolved, and again, as we've gotten into much more of the, the clinical um, space, it's really important to think about what the member, our members need holistically. So a, a lot of things emerging in terms of, you know, social drivers, looking at health equity um, with, you know, race and ethnicity and, and social needs, if they have transportation needs or food insecurities. These are all things that, that we need to have uh, products to really support a, a, a lot of our, our members as we as we go into the, the the marketplaces. So we're really trying to leverage our data and our and our um, uh, different product capabilities for the, the the benefit of those members. And a lot of times people don't want to hear from their health insurer what they should do because it doesn't you know it's not always the um, the trust factor there. So what we do try to do with a lot of our data products is, you know, push that information through the provider channels to the members, you know, primary care physicians, how they're, how they're managing that health. We have a tremendous amount of uh, products that look at, um, leverage a lot of the, the, artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithms, you know, if we've determined based on what we know about someone, maybe if they're um, uh, maybe at, a, at risk of falling or they're uh, pre, you know, diabetic or, or components like that, we really leverage our data and put them into uh, products that, that help. And we partner with our physician community to deliver a lot of a lot of those results so that uh, we can collectively uh, bring bring um, success to the a member's health. Great, great. Krishna? Yeah, uh, great points, Nancy. So, yeah, I mean, I, see, I think leveraging data to make decisions has always been the case in the clinical space and like everywhere, right? Uh, but but uh, Girish, I really like the way you actually asked the question, right? Like, how do you think about, like, when we try to productize this, when we think about this as a product, uh, I think I, I look at this as a kind of a solution, right, which can help you by pulling this healthcare data together, right? Maybe, maybe when I say healthcare data, maybe I'm limiting, like, bringing the data that you have together, primarily to do three things, right? And probably coming from a purely, uh, in a way, the technical hat here is, Processing, the solution can help you even identify the opportunities. That is the capability today we have. What, what, are, the, what, are, the, uh, what are the objectives that we can solve today? And two, even the data can help you to validate are these truly potential objectives for you to solve? Or are there truly potential challenges that you can solve? And three, the, the solution should be able to be very prescriptive about how do you solve them? What happens when you solve them? Right. I think uh, when I look at when we build these products, some a solution that can provide the ability for you to do these three things uh, can be a data a data product. Again, we call it data product because you're heavily relying on the data that goes into this. Right. Uh, like examples uh, in the I mean, even in the I think maybe Nancy might be true in the payer space as well. Like the claims has been always a big thing for healthcare. Right. Like when you look at the cost and all processing a claim and all plays a big role today. Uh, we can be with, with the capabilities we have, I should be able to predict what would happen with the claim at the point of first interaction with the patient, right? And, and, and a product like that can help, that, that brings all this together for me to be able to do that to me is a, is a data product, right? And then we can think, obviously people can think, when many on this call, they can think of hundreds of such products, uh, but bringing the solution together is probably the best way we can benefit from productizing it. Yeah, no, I really like how both uh, Nancy and you, Krishna, uh, are uh, are sharing your insights into this because otherwise it it uh, gets to be a very narrow uh, lens. I, I like to the examples that you guys used, particularly from the claims perspective, right? Uh, it, it, there is yeah, there is a department for that, but behind that, if you don't 
package that as a data product, they won't be able to not only claim, but also to process those things. So it, it, it's fascinating how pervasive the data product concept is. And, uh, um, and what I'm realizing more and more is as we talk to uh, uh, leaders such as yourself, how holistically you align this approach to the outcome of what you're trying to deliver. Uh, um, so so uh, any other thoughts, Nancy or Krishna, before we continue on with the rest of the session? I, I guess, you know, the one thing that I, I would say is, you know, a lot of other industries have been doing this kind of stuff for, for, for years. Um, that in the healthcare space, it's, it's, I don't want to say healthcare is behind the times, but in, in, in many respects, it, it, it can be compared to other industries. But the power that we have with the, the data to make such a difference in, in, in people's lives is a, is a tremendous asset. And I, I just think that um, it, it's really important, uh, as, as you know, Krishna pointed out in the in the beginning. If you look at that four trillion dollar number, I mean, we have to get that under control and in in a way that you know ben benefits constituents. And, and I think this will help you know drive some of 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 that success as we move forward. Um, I'll, I'll continue on. So I, I think uh, you, uh, both you, Nancy, and Krishna talked about some of these things already. So, so, so it's it's uh, the intent here is to uh, get more of a holistic thinking around the data product concept as an innovation driver to help realize the business goals, aka revenue, if you're a going concern and experiment faster and get insights. I think, Nancy, you meant uh, both you and uh, um, Krishna talked about getting the healthcare costs under control. The ability to do things more cohesively is, is definitely uh, 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 one of the, uh, um, you know, uh, the opportunities or uh, I, I would say the, the direct and indirect benefits. What are your thoughts on how data products enable your business? I mean, yeah, I can take a shot. Like, I can't agree more, right? Like, I think this, this, that's perfect, right? Like, I mean, innovation is very much needed. You know, when I think about innovation, I always think that, think about the innovation that happened in the healthcare space. If you look at so many things that we see that we have evolved in the way we treat a patient and take care of a, a patient, oh my gosh, like that innovation is awesome. Uh, what I've learned, I know I, I'm probably a newbie, three years into healthcare is nothing compared to people who have been there for a long time and serving the patients. One thing I've learned is uh, in the healthcare space, the focus has always traditionally been on serving the patient on the clinical side. So I don't think the leaders took, uh, there, was, there was really time for them to come back and think about other things that can be enabling them. So a lot of innovation happened in that space. Uh, but now I think this conversations have started in terms of like, you know, we're talking about data products, right? Like, oh, well, what can we do with all this data we are having? Can we think about claims? Can we think about our experience? Can we even think about how do I put together a plan of care uh, that can assist, right? And again, we are thinking about all this as not a replacement, but as a substitution to what already is happening in the clinical space, right? Uh, so, so for that, this kind of education and thinking, you know, is, is giving this to the, the I mean, the back end, I mean, I would call them the back end or back office, right? Which are like supporting all the clinical staff is helping with faster innovation and, and can't agree more, right? Innovation is only possible and you can see the light if you quickly experiment on it and try to figure out if this is going to work or it quickly fail fast, fail fast is the mantra that we use, right? And then those we succeed, we learn from them and we try to see what we can improve in, with the rest. Yeah, and then it's 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 definitely a, 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 a great insights because uh, I, I, you talked about uh, uh, experiment fast, fail fast, right? So that you can iterate and bringing the best practices from other aspects of IT and software development and other industries to healthcare. Uh, that, that that's that's great. Nancy, your thoughts? Yeah, very very similar. I mean, I I think both the combination of the explosion of the data available to us in, con in conjunction with the, the technology and the migration to you know, more cloud environments really 
opens the door up exponentially in, in terms of how quickly we can access data, do a lot of that experimentation, what is gonna, gonna work and what is, is not, and, and put out you know, innovative products that, that you know, really, really drive what the, the, the company needs. I think you know, just as a, as a, a couple of I examples there, um, we've we've tried to focus on some you know core domains in in, in terms of understanding um, because there there's such a broad opportunity that you really do need to to kind of focus somewhere to 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 get started. So if you just look at things like um, you know very prevalent today is behavioral health. How can we better you know help? people with a behavioral health conditions. So we can iterate on that data so quickly now where it used to take months to pull those data sources together, you know, run insights against them. You know, now it's at, at our fingertips and it's it's really opened the the, the doors in, in terms of how we can how we can get insights into people's hands quicker. I will say as well, you, you know, at least within our company, um, we, we do pride ourselves on being very insights and in, in data driven. It is something that we need to do as an organization to, to be uh, effective and, and share those insights. That's the other thing that, that I think is really critical. Oftentimes if, if there is an insight, I mean, we need to get that, as I mentioned previously, into the hands of the provider or the member. I mean, if they haven't, you know, had a, a, a mammogram for 10 years, you know, reminders like that of, of things, because unfortunately, the, the industry is, is, is still disjointed. Me members can go to multiple providers and not your, your, your new provider may not know all of the, the, the history a, a, about that. So that's where we can really connect the dots and experiment quicker and develop insights and share them. Yeah, no, fascinating. So I, I must admit healthcare is better than going to a car dealer. I'll just leave that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, great insights. Uh, well, every, everything is rosy, right? But it's not. So this is a, 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 let's talk about some of the challenges, right? So so, so if I look at, um, this is a, a statistic or a- hey, Grish, uh, sorry to interrupt. Like, I mean, I think there's, a, this, uh, I don't know, we're we waiting for the Q&A until the end. There's someone, I think Lisa has, has a question that there's a hand raised in the, from the attendees. Okay. Um, it's so, uh, Colleen. Um, maybe we can get the question posted over chat. That way, we can address that as we go through this. Is that possible? Okay, perfect. Uh, thanks, uh, uh, Krishna. So this is a statistic from Harvard Business Review, and when they polled data leaders and said, "What's your confidence in the data quality?" Only three percent said. It's average data quality. Uh, they have some sort of confidence. Interestingly, yesterday I was in New York hosting a CDO session on data quality. I polled the audience in that the confidence was even lower than this. So, 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 it, it, it's, it's, so let's now uh, uh, look at what are some of the challenges, uh, um, um, data challenges in healthcare. Uh, so I'm going to take a quick pause here and see, look at the question. Uh, um, okay, I think it's just a transaction regarding, okay, please post the uh, uh, questions over Zoom chat. So our request to the attend attendees today is if you have questions, please post it on the, on, on the chat window. So we know there are hundreds and possibly thousands of uh, data related challenges within healthcare. I started off with a long list I of 16, of 16 pillars, then I brought it down to eight, then six, then I could only fit four here. So this is again a, 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 a snapshot. And within that itself, you have too many of these uh, uh, details. So what I want to invite our, uh, our expert speakers is to share their perspective. And also we'll have a poll for the audience after we go through the slide. So let's start with Krishna. What are your thoughts on uh, um, the common data 
challenges that your industry experiences today? Yeah, no, the data quality I mean, stands out to me, right? Uh, uh, definitely, because we said like when there's plethora of data that's being generated, uh, you want to make sure that that's consumable, right? And then you want to make sure that you're interpreting the data right. So uh, having a process where you're making sure that the data is clean, ready for consumption, people understand the data that they're consuming, that is definitely a big challenge. And I already, I think, gave you the stat, like so too many tools and platforms, right? Like, so there are so many applications uh, and there are a lot of overlapping capabilities. So you need to understand how do you bucket them and what is the best way to optimize that? Not only that, that would help, help you with creating, managing your cost, but it also becomes easy for you to even support them and also get more cleaner data out of that. You know, talent shortage, hey, I think it's, it's a cycle we all go through, right? I think six months ago, everyone was struggling for like, you know, finding the right talent. I think that still exists in pockets. I think now maybe unfortunately for some, like there's more talent available in the market. Uh, so we always uh, struggle to find, and also with healthcare, maybe this is true for others in some pockets is, healthcare, you are looking for some niche skills, right? There are applications which are not like mainstream. So you need someone having certain skill set and they have to be certified in some things and all. So it's even getting more, more and more challenging for you to find the right skill sets. Regulatory and compliance, I always like to look at it more as a, a challenge, but something that I cannot control. So how quickly I can adapt to that, right? Uh, there are very limited things that you can do. There, these are regulations, they're predefined, they have been that way for a very long time. You cannot negotiate, uh, but how can you be smart about handling them, right? Like how, how can you try to re-engineer your process to the extent that you can on your end so that this, this doesn't become the bottleneck. Uh, so yeah, and, and th this is definitely a, a list that has other sub items in it, but I can readily connect with all of this. Yeah, so um, uh, um, folks, uh, uh, we have just pushed out a poll uh, to get the audience's perspective on what are your top challenges. So feel free to uh, 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 um, chime in and we'll get back to the results of the poll after we get uh, Nancy's uh, uh, um, perspective. Go ahead. Yeah, you know, the, 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 the statistics you showed around how many folks thought their quality was good is interesting because I think that that was very parallel with, you know, certainly what we see. And, and I think part of the problem is how you measure that, that quality. Because typically, unless you're showing something that says quality is good and you've got metrics to back that up, people only hear about the 1% the, the of problems there are, and then it's all, you know, your, your, your data is bad. So the, the data quality is, is, you really need to put a lot of effort into promoting and, and checking how it is good because there, there are problems. I mean, there's, there's no doubt about it. You will never have perfect data quality, but you need a way to effectively find the things that are significant issues that need to be uh, fixed immediately, whether that's you know, something that comes from external sources of, of information, whether that comes for how people are, are using the data in, in, internally, there's a, there's a whole host of, of, of options there. But again, I think people think if they hear a problem, they think quality is bad versus, you know, being able to justify why, why it is good. So that's it, it's a little bit of an uphill battle, and it's important you have the, the the right programs in place. The other one that I'll comment on is the the the, the talent, and and I really liked what Christian said about the um, the learning curve within healthcare is pretty significant. So it, it, you really need that background to to come in and and, and be effective, and that's where that is much more challenging. I mean, you can always find the right um, technical solutions and support, but to, to find people that have enough of the, the healthcare background and, and, and particularly in some of these data spaces, that's, that's a, a hard, a, a limited pool. It's, it's growing, but it's a limited pool and the learning curve is long. So it's it's definitely something we need to 
need to be able to continue to, to grow talent and, and make sure that we have uh, programs that support that. Well, well said, both of you. Colin, do we have the results from the poll? All right. Um, so uh, uh, I don't know if the audience can see this. I'll just read it out. 43% of the attendees said data quality is a problem uh, among the top data problem. 29% said it's the tools and 19% said other and then talent and regulatory are 5% each. In other words, data quality and then too many tools or technologies are dominating. Any thoughts on that? See, I mean, yeah, as I said, like data quality doesn't really standing out, doesn't surprise me. Uh, but I, I actually the, the point that uh, Nancy made, uh, I, I wanted to uh, reiterate, I think that's such a key point. When it, when it comes to data quality, I kind of see like, I put it in two buckets, right? There's, there's inherent data issues, right? When you're sourcing the data, it's not clean data. It's, it's not like the right data. You know, there are some mismatches and all that stuff so that you can control. But in the organizations, you also see there are perceived data quality issues. When I say perceived, it's nothing wrong, right? You know, I typically I'm seeing this report, I'm comparing with another report and saying that they don't match. And I believe that, oh, I cannot trust this data anymore. This, this happens quite a bit. And all this happens because I think lack of a process in which you assure your consumer why you think this data quality is good. Like the way, how you measure this data quality, that's where I like what Nancy was saying is, you need, to, I think it's your responsibility as a provider of the data, like the owner of the data platform to put a process in place where your consumer feels confident about what they're consuming, right? And, and, and I think once you do that, I, I think just naturally some of this, I think we can bring this percentage down of data quality. Oh, thanks. Nancy, any thoughts on Yeah, and it, and it kind of gets into, you know, the point that was just made too, because there are too many tools and platforms that are inconsistent, again, it kind of links back to quality, even though uh, each respective tool may have defined something a certain way, it's inconsistent. So people think it's a quality issue. So I, I think there's a, a, a lot of underlying uh, components to, to what drives the perception and or the reality of data quality. Yeah, it's, it's, it's on, on that. So recently we did a survey targeting Snowflake data, uh, platform users. Um, it turns out everyone whom we surveyed had at least three, two or more other uh, data platforms. So it's no surprise, right? So depending on when you got started, you may have 20, 10, 12 different data platforms live alone tools and technologies that exist. Fascinating. So, so I, I think uh, uh, no surprise here is our takeaway, right? So, okay, let's move on. I think we talked about the poll. Uh, so continuing on our journey, right? So, so then some, some of you in the audience may be thinking, okay, this data product concept is, uh, it's, it's, it's cool. So uh, this is again, if I'm an engineer or, uh, or someone, an architect, how do I look at building a data product? It's not that you have all these elements, you have sources, landing zones, enriched zone and the warehouses, and then consumption layer or the vertical on the right side and the orchestration across. So the challenges that we hear from our customers and prospects is that these, these are a lot of them are trending uh, or, or not just trending. Uh, it, it's, it's, yes, there is the inherent data quality issues. And there is uh, about uh, infrastructure and compute performance, predicting the uh, availability of the system. And, uh, I, uh, and while cloud platforms are great, but often with the different uh, pricing models or uh, the consumption model in particular, I, I, it's things get out of whack or control very fast. So these are some of the uh, um, uh, uh, the common challenge, operational challenges. In fact, not the strategic or build challenges. More on the operational side is 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 what uh, uh, what we are hearing from our customer base. So th th this is where uh, we uh, we uh, believe, and the and the uh, and uh, uh, emerging group of customers believe that data observability is is is, is a is is a key innovation driver. So so one of the things here, the way 
we want to look at this is to say, what is data observability? So uh, the concept of data observability is, has, has been around for about four, four and a half years. In fact, our, our founders of Axel Data, we, we are a four and a half year old startup. We've, uh, we are not only the, uh, uh, came up with the uh, concept of data observability four and a half years ago, and uh, we've been, uh, we've, we've rolled out uh, uh, our, uh, our um, platform, which does multiple things. So the interesting things, I want to get your attention to what Gartner has. My apologies, I put that a little too small. What Gartner said recently uh, is that data observability has now become essential to support as well as augment existing and modern data management architectures. So th this I find is very ins ins insightful in from a perspective that it's saying it's not only for your legacy data systems or what you may think is operational today, but as you're onboarding, perhaps moving more to the cloud or newer ways of doing ELT or newer, uh, more orchestration tools. What Gartner strongly believes is that this is uh, going, to, it's going to be foundational. So Axel Data, as I mentioned, is a company focused on data observability. So uh, what we have done is, uh, we have taken the concept of what Gartner calls as a multi-layer data observability, and that's what we offer in our platform. What we offer are what I call the four layers. One is the first one is around compute and infrastructure. Second one is around reliability. Third one is around pipeline observability. And the last one is around users across your thing, whether you're a, a leader such as Nancy or Krishna, as well as to a data admin. So having a, that holistic uh, um, uh, um, uh, segment or persona view from a user's perspective as well as from different teams' perspective. So, so the way in which we look see this evolving is that uh, you need to have insights into your compute and infrastructure layer. That's about how much are you not only spending, but also are you likely to have an outage? Of what is the uh, what is the uh, loading on your infrastructure and compute layers? And when it comes to data quality, I won't say more. Uh, we look at data reliability as the desired outcome because data quality is a continuum and is 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 a, is a thing to achieve certain things. But reliability is what all enterprises, including healthcare, strive to achieve. And then pipelines, obviously, uh, that they're all rich these days, right? But again, it's like you heard from Nancy and Krishna, they, they not only have so many two, uh, applications that they offer as data products to their, uh, to their stakeholders, but each of them have some sort of a pipeline built in behind that. So again, uh, my view uh, 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 here is that this is a, 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 a solution that addresses many of the pain points that uh, data uh, leaders and practitioners have today. So, so I think, uh, Colin, you pushed out the poll uh, about uh, uh, what we are really trying to understand is how many of you are, 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 are familiar or heard of data observability, uh, um, and then also where are you in your stage of considering uh, data observability? Do we have any of the data, Colin? Perfect. Uh, interesting. This is fascinating. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I, I don't know if my uh, Nancy and Krishna can see this. So what I'm uh, seeing here is that 21% of the people are saying they are using data observability today, and 32% are not, and 37% are planning to. So if I summarize this, roughly about 50, 60, close to 60% are either using or planning to use data observability. Your thoughts, uh, starting with Nancy. Yeah, I, you, you know, and it, it, it's interesting in terms of understanding, you know, what data observability is, because honestly, I'll, I'll just be transparent. You know, I hadn't really heard that term used in, in that sense up until recently, but the good news is, you know, we are we were doing a, a lot of the, the the capabilities that that go into data observability, and you know, one of the things that I think has made this much more relevant and uh, able to to truly look across all of these channels and is is the technology because you know if I look at our data, I mean, we have 
millions of data points. There's no way you can check all of those things and maybe in, in more historical manual pro processes. I mean, even though there's, you know, certain, certain levels of automation, they're very basic. They're not, you know, in terms of truly, is this the right information? It, you know, it's much easier to check, did we get the data? Did we not get the data? Did the records balance from, you know, system to system, but is the is the content right? And that's what's what's really challenging, or is it changing? But the way that we can employ this now is, you know, really have a lot of those end to end data points and the the algorithms and the the models that can point out the um, anomalies. That's what's key. You've got to find the needles in the haystacks that make the biggest difference. And that's where I think a lot of the, 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 the capabilities within you know, AI and ML and, and uh, cloud computing have really made that, that much more possible than in the past. Yeah, well, 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 well put there. It's 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 again. Uh, 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 we are doing this more of a thought leadership session, uh, as Nancy highlighted, right? So even though uh, the concept of data observability is relatively new from us uh, uh, as a dedicated standalone solution perspective, she's been doing a little bit of that previously, perhaps uh, 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 within her portfolio. Krishna, your thoughts on the results? Yeah, uh, I, I think I can better resonate. Uh, I resonate with this better, Adrish, <laughs> from it to you know some of the other stats that we heard, right? Like sixty percent saying they have heard about it, they know it, or they they kind of heard about it, and forty percent saying that this is relatively a new new concept that makes sense. With if I had to take a guess, I would have probably done it like 50-50. So so from that, yeah, this is this is a good poll. Like I mean, I think it makes sense and. And I agree more with Nancy what Nancy said, and you reiterated, right? These capabilities already exist. This is not something like a new con. This is not like anything that's new. But what's what the the innovation in this is bringing all these capabilities together, correct? Right. So that I look at this as a data product that can enable creation of multiple data products. So this would now truly give you that capability today for you to be able to identify, right? For you to be able to validate, for you to be able to be prescriptive about a solution. Now this 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 concept of data observability bringing all these pieces together is now enabling and i think just if we go with this the this previous slide we said at experiment faster right like speeding up this journey of creating these products and benefiting from them i can see where th this this concept and bringing all this together can accelerate the journey cool cool yeah so let's let's continue on no, a great 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 viewpoints so uh, um, it's, it, this is what uh, um, we already did that. So if I take revisit the architecture slide, so to speak, previously, right? So what we are seeing is data observability to your point. It's uh, it's not meant to be the only tool. The, turns out in, in the data in the industry, there are hundreds of tools, right? So, so how do we actually uh, do things uh, and to, to get the right value? So that's where it's the multi-layered approach comes in handy. So what, what I would like to do now is to actually get into the discussion, right? So, so, so for the audience here, so uh, we are, uh, Gartner has written a short report on this. It's a great report to get you started uh, for the folks who are not familiar with the concept of data observability. Highly recommend you go and uh, take a look at it. There's a link in the bottom right of the slide here. You can uh, just down, uh, it's, you can view the, it's, it's a six page report. It, it, it's very interesting. So uh, I, I think Krishna and Nancy both started talking about this. What I wanted to uh, now have a, a discussion and also get your recommendation is for folks in data, uh, data leaders uh, happen to be in healthcare, uh, hopefully uh, are primarily for today's uh, uh, audience. How, how how should they approach this concept of data observability? And I, I, I liked what both of you said, Nancy and uh, Krishna, that's more of a holistic way of approaching and can be this innovation driver. So, so how should they get started? I and one of the ways that we kind of got started was, I think, again, traditionally, people look at the the, the pipelines and, and, and look at it from you know, the flow from system to system. But 
we really flipped it on its head and started with the users. What data is important to different areas across the company? Because everybody has different needs, the same set of data for, for you know, someone in our actuarial team is gonna be different from someone in our clinical care management teams. So we really started from the, the user side and, and listed out, you know, what are the, the most critical things and, and how does that work, you know, kind of keeping all of these kind of lighter blue circles in mind and, and bringing that together because that's, that's where the rubber hits the road. I mean, having data and having it just sit there doesn't mm -hmm. make a difference, but it's really how you use it that needs to be focused on. That is make it actionable. Got it. Mm -hmm. Krishna? Yeah, I, I, I would say that, you know, the, you start the journey, right? I, I would look at this as a as journey, right? Like uh, start putting, thinking about data observability as part of your data strategy and think about like when you take this journey, how would that roadmap look like? You know, uh, start educating your teams on what this is, right? I, I personally, I mean, uh, as Nancy said, like I myself had to educate myself a lot more uh, as we grow, right? Because uh, the name is so intuitive. And sometimes when you look at that, you might be maybe focusing on a small piece of it. So try to understand the whole gamut of what this data observability as a as a total concept mean and see what's the right way to disperse that in, in your data teams and also in, across the organization. And, and this would naturally generate a lot of uh, thought, right? The thoughts would come together, as I said, like make it part of your data strategy and see what is the right way to target this and approach it so that you can start knocking them down. Uh, the great things like I know we saw on the previous slide, I know there were some things that I can relate to it is, Obviously, a lot of uh, operationalization is something we all do in different industries, right? And, and I think something like this is also a very good start for us to even consider it as a, as a base foundational capability for operationalization. So, yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 it's fascinating. Uh, both of you said something that uh, we are experiencing as well. Uh, as you know, there is... Uh, let's say, uh, unfair focus on pipelines today in the industry with new tools and things like that. A and uh, what we are seeing is that uh, a combination of uh, uh, what both of you said. There are uh, many uh, uh, data leaders are looking for the insights on the compute and infra. They want to understand what's their spend, what AKA sometimes in the, people in the industry call it FinOps, right? F-I-N-O-P-S. Uh, but so, so how, how am I, is my spend, uh, my budget all uh, uh, in line or am I blowing, uh, blowing, blowing it off because of the consumption model, which has no checks and bounds, right? And, and then the quality and reliability. So, so the evolution we are seeing is more and more folks looking at both the infra and the uh, reliability or aka quality lens together, because just uh, looking at one without the other is uh, it, there's too many tools here, right? So, so, so it, uh, our, uh, what we are seeing is people are saying, okay, we want to simplify. Perhaps I'm using a legacy data quality tool where it takes 20 days to run a uh, <laughs> run a job, aka pipeline, whereas perhaps a modern tool can do it, do it in a few hours or something like that, right? So not only because it's re-engineered or re-architected, and to, while addressing the pipelines, right? So so and and I think it's fascinating, uh, Nancy. Also uh, led by uh, users, the, what we are seeing is it's having this niche focus on just let's say a data analyst is it, not sufficient. You need to have, take a more holistic view as you were saying, whether it is uh, uh, who are the uh, stakeholders for this and bringing it down. That's what we are seeing, is seeing in the industry. And, uh, and uh, uh, that's, that's how we are seeing this uh, evolving. More thoughts, Krishna and, or Nancy? No, you covered it well, yeah. yeah. Um, so, so uh, so this is what we had prepared. So, uh, uh, so for the uh, attendees that are uh, 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 of today's session, we are. Uh, if you want to get started with data observability, 
Um, you, it, uh, you can sign up for a free trial. Of, it's of our cloud platform. You can experience all the four aspects of what I mentioned here um, and experiment and just let us know. We are here to uh, help you get uh, uh, get started with your data journey, whether you're on-prem or cloud native, pick your choice of cloud native products, Snowflake, Databricks, Redshift, whatever, right? So as well as a hybrid self-serve model, some of some folks today will say, hey, I can only do in a VPC or a self-serve model. We support that as well. So again, this is here as a, to serve as a catalyst for your needs. Let us know. Um, and uh, maybe this is the time, I know we had some questions, Colleen, maybe we can get some of the questions uh, in if, the, if, some, if people typed in their questions. Colleen, uh, I know there were a few prompts for questions. I don't know if they made it, made it through. Yeah, uh, yeah, I don't. It's yeah, in the chat, I don't okay. see it. Yeah, don't see any. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think maybe uh, it's uh, we could. Uh, I could have done a better job highlighting uh, the option here. So, um, uh, before we wrap, I want to thank Krishna and Nancy for spending your valuable time and you not only are you a great leader data leaders but are you representing your industries very well um uh, any parting thoughts uh, uh, comments from both of you or either of you thanks thanks for having me uh, it's it's been it's been a pleasure uh, grish and then nancy it's an honor yeah, to share <laughs> to have the exchange thoughts with you uh, and thank thank you all for those of you who have dialed in uh, taking some of your time today. Yep, I, I agree, and I think these are all you know good topics. And and no matter how long we've been in this space, we can all continue to learn from each other. On that note, thank you so much, Nancy, Krishna, Colleen, and Loretta. Uh, so um, I appreciate all the time. And for the attendees, you'll get a link to the recording very soon. And if you have any questions, reach out to any of us. We are here to help you with your data journey, no matter wherever you are. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. All right, Colleen, thank you so much. Yep, you're welcome. And thank you also, everyone, for joining. Girish, thank you for uh, moderating this webinar. You do have a good day, and I'll see you soon. I'll go ahead and end the screen recording. Okay. Thank you.